the hook used is a 3x long number 10. I like Daiichi because they're strong, they take a good point, and they, they are a very good steel. Put on a 532nd bead going through the small hole first. The lead I use, the wire I use, is lead-free wire, 25 thousandths diameter. I take 16 wraps up to the bead, break it off, twist the bead as you push it up into the countersink, and then pinch off the back of it with your thumbnail, the tag end. The thread I use is a flat wax nylon. It's super strong and it makes for a very strong fly. I can really crank down on it. I start by building a dam at the back of the wire to hold it in place and then come all the way back to a point right above the barb and then build up a nice tapered, evenly tapered ramp. Come back up to the bead with five or six very light wraps. So when you come back, you tighten real hard and pull those wraps you just put on down into the into the into the wire, and make it uh, uh, a very strong body that that won't twist on you. For a tail, I want a meaty looking tail. I don't want those stringy. Uh, scraggly ends of the marabou. So I, uh, at a point out near the tip, differs with each feather. I, I, I cut the end of the stem off. Then I prepare the, the, the marabou by pulling off most of those stringy ends. Not all of them, but most of them. I leave some on so that when it's in the water, it gives a tapered it's a tapered uh, look to it when it's wet and it fishes a lot better. Take three strong wraps, cut it off right behind the bead, come up with some tight wraps, then pull it on, junk back, tighten as hard as you can. It would break a normal, any thread, it would break a three-aught thread. As hard as you can, come back underneath the, the, uh, the tail around the shank to, uh, to further tighten the tail on there and also to keep it from twisting around while you're casting, twisting around the bend of the hook. I prepare the marabou, uh, the estas, the fibers lean back, so I pull them back a little bit more and then tighten, tie it on right at the start of that ramp. It'll take about nine or ten really hard turns to lock it in right above that point above the barb. Then bring the thread all the way up, covering most all of that marabou. If you miss a spot here and there, it's not that big a deal. Then come forward with five wraps, evenly spaced. I pull the fibers back. It's like folding hackle on a wet fly or a salmon fly. And I twist the, the estas as I'm turning it on. And here again, stroking it back. It just gives it a, ni a nicer appearance. I don't think the fish care one way or the other, but it, you might as well make a nice looking fly. And then when you get up to that last bend, it's important that you pull them, you pull the estas really tight. What I do, I, I, against, I put my thumbnail or fingernail against that bead and I pull as hard as I can using the bead as a fulcrum point. Then three tight wraps in front, cut off underneath, and there you have a nice tag end that you want to whip finish. Uh, the, the red collar on these flies are, are, are a result of a lot of wraps around that tag end to secure it. It's not, a, it's not for aesthetics, it's not to make a nice pretty looking hot spot or anything, it's to really really secure that tag end in there. And then then I 
squeeze down with my thumbnail while I'm pulling as hard as I can without breaking. And then cut it off. And there you have it. I use Loon hardhead cement. It's water-based. You can dilute it with water. It's uh, very economical, plus it uh, makes a nice shiny head. I've 50 years of flat dyeing, I've not found a better head cement than, than this hard head loon. There you have it, a bulletproof golden retriever. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and maybe picked up a tip or two. I've tied over 50,000 of these flies and I sure fish them a lot too. Check out my website for where you can purchase materials or and the flies themselves. I personally tie every fly sold on my website. Thanks a lot for watching.